Good morning, everybody. It's Allison Haikila, and I am doing another impromptu live video. I'm trying to get my mojo going. I have a lot of ideas, and I can't get quite focused. Um, and I thought that doing a live would help me. It's helped me in the past. So I decided to go for it. Um, I'm going to do a technique today that I haven't done in a long time, but I really like to do, especially for Halloween. And I thought it would be fun to show you guys because I don't think that this technique has been really shown around very much lately. So I thought it would be fun to, uh, to teach you guys how to do it. So basically what happens here is I've got a metal stencil and I've got just plain white cardstock and I'm going to be using glossy black embossing paste from Dreamweaver, which you can get from Stampendous. And then I'm going to use some metallic powders. These um, used to be available from Stampendous. They're not anymore, but you can get them from, I think I saw them on an Etsy shop. You just have to kind of Google metallic effects powders and you might be able to come up with them. Um, I decided to also use some Perfect Pearls because these are pretty readily available. They come in a lot of colors. Um, and I'm sure that many of my crafty friends are um, more familiar with the Perfect Pearls than they are the metallic effects. But I only have a couple of colors of these, um, but these three happen to work with what I'm doing today. So if you can find the metallic effects powders, these are fantastic, but the Perfect Pearls work for what we're doing as well. So I have been for the last few years participating in the 31 days of Halloween. The group that I was originally posting with kind of disbanded for various reasons, um, time and, and things like that. So I really haven't had the opportunity to do a whole lot with Halloween this year, which is pretty crazy. It makes me kind of sad. Um, I've been so busy doing other projects for other design teams that Halloween has just kind of fallen by the wayside. Um, so I thought this was a good project to do to kind of get my Halloween groove on. So I've got this great jack-o'-lantern stencil. Again, this is from Dreamweaver. You can get it through Stampendous. It is still available. I checked this morning right before I went live. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to tape this stencil down. I'm working on my glass mat um, and I've got just plain old scotch tape. If you've got that purple tape, you can use that. Um, and I'm just putting it on my arm to kind of use the oils in my skin to kind of remove some of the tack. Again, if you have that purple tape or low tack tape, that's definitely better, um, but I don't have it. So we're gonna just go like this. So we're going to tape this down and I'm gonna tape all the way around this because we don't want the embossing paste that we're going to use to seep around the edges. So we're gonna just do that like this. Hey Fawn, how are you? Thanks for joining me. I kind of decided to do this at the last minute and I'm so glad you're here. You gotta make sure that you don't cover the stencil like I almost did just now. Okay. I'm just gonna kind of get these spots at the top here. Make sure it's down really well. This is the least exciting part of it, I promise. Ugh. Okay, I've got that. Hey, Fawn, have you ever worked with stencils before? I love stencils. I don't use my stencils as much as I used to, and I miss them. Okay, so now we've got this tape down. Hey, Val, how are you? Okay, so again, we're gonna start with the glossy black embossing paste. This technique does not work very well at all with um, the matte black. You really need to use glossy. You can probably get away with using white, but that's going to give you a different effect. I want something that's dark. Um, so we're going to work with the black. So if you've never used embossing paste before, there are really good ways to work with it and some that are not so good. Fawn does sometimes, you don't have a lot, working on getting more. Oh, I'm obsessed with my stencils. So if you need recommendations, let me know. Um, a lot of times in videos, I see people scooping out their paste and just kind of patting it along. This is not icing. You don't really want to have a texture on it. Um, you want it to be nice and smooth. So what we're going to do is we are going to apply this to the top like this. And this is one of the reasons why I like having tape way up high. Sometimes I'll double my top row of tape to make it thicker. 
um, because I'm going to be applying the paste way up here. Value use stencils, that's awesome. I did not know that. Okay, so there's a lot on here. We are not gonna use nearly this much. Now, you know, like when you pour out embossing powder and what have you, you just dump out a ton of it and you really just hardly use any. So that's gonna be the case with this. Um, as a side note, I have a bucket of water next to me, which I'll probably step in at some point today um, <laughs> to clean off my stencil because you don't want the paste to dry on your stencil. You want it to get wet immediately and either use like an old toothbrush or something to scrub it off or just rinse, rinse it under the sink. But since we're doing a live, I decided not to do that. Now, before I get ahead of myself, I have my paste spreader here and I've got my palette knife here and you can use either of these, okay? When I have a stencil that is bigger than my palette knife, I tend to use the paste spreader, okay? Just because it's gonna be easier. You wanna try and go across the stencil as few times as possible, okay? Because then you're gonna have the chance, especially with a stencil like this that has these really thin lines, you have the chance of getting the paste underneath, okay? So we're gonna just try to sweep once, maybe twice, and that's it, we're gonna leave it be. Also, when you see the end result of this technique, um, you'll see that having it perfectly smooth isn't a big deal. Um, but again, you don't want to push any paste underneath the stencil. So we're going to hold this at a 45 degree angle. If you don't have a paste spreader like this, you can use like a credit card or something. But again, if you're working with bigger stencils, something big like this is really ideal. And this is nice and solid. And we're going to sweep it right across like that and I got some that it did not take to so now I'm gonna just take this paste and kind of place it here just because it's a small area and I should be able to pick it up really easily you don't want to overwork it though like I said and I'm gonna just smooth it across again Again, you want to work at like a 45 degree angle and that's it. Okay. So now we're going to take what's left here and we're going to scoop it back in because we don't want to waste this stuff. This jar has lasted me a very long, long time. Okay. And then I'm going to dump all of this into my bucket and I'm going to pull the, the stencil up. So now we want to carefully remove what I'd like to try to do is get it to flip up like a hinge. That would be ideal because then you're not going to take a chance with shifting it around. So we're going to pull up these sides here. I didn't tack that down so good. Okay, here we go. And now we're going to flip this up. Oh, I've got a piece of tape on the side here. Ta-da! Okay, so that's that. So we could potentially leave it as is. Let it dry, and, you know, then you can do what you want to it at the end, you know, and make it a, a full card. Hey, Cal, how are you? You getting your hair did? Very nice. Can't wait to see it. Um, but we're going to take this one step further and we're going to use again, these metallic powders, get this out of the way, um, to create a molten metal effect. Thank you. But you see, you have, I mean, I've got a couple of grooves here, but for the most part, it's really nice and smooth. You don't want to keep going over it. Hey, Christine, how are you? How's the fam? Haven't seen you guys in a dog's age. Okay. So I'm flipping these over. Okay. Making sure that powder settles to the bottom and I am going to open these guys up you can use these powders for so many things you can you can do this technique in a couple of different ways too um, but this is the way I like doing it okay so now I'm gonna take some brushes and I am going to just pick up the powder with the brush and I'm going to tap it on top. 
some green, and you don't need to worry about where it's going. Thanks, Christine. It's going to look even better when I'm done, promise. And you're just going to tap the powder, like so, right where the paste is. Okay, can you see that? Okay, and then we can change colors. I'm using a round brush right now. Doesn't really matter what kind of brush. I mean, I wouldn't use a fan brush per se because that's going to be really big. Um, and it might just have you fly powder all over the place. You just don't, you don't, like, this is one of those things, again, like the embossing powder and the, the embossing paste even, that, you know, once you buy one of these jars, you're going to have it for a very long time, but you don't want to be wasteful either. So, you know, using a round brush like this guy is perfect. Just tap, 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 tap. Okay, and then when you're done with that color, I'm going to go into the red. I use this jack-o'-lantern a number of times for this technique, and I use different colors each time, and it always looks super cool. Does anybody have any questions while well, I'm tap, tap, tapping? I kind of have to finish the process before I can go on to the next step because you can't go back and redo. So this will take me a couple of minutes. So if anybody wants to chat with me, feel free. Okay, I'm going to go in some purple. Again, these three here are perfect pearls from Ranger. They're readily available from many different online stores. And then these two here are metallic effects. Um, and they're a little bit more difficult to come by now, but their colors are really beautiful. And we just want to get a lot of color on the paste. It's not going to, um, the powders are not going to move around too much once you do the next step. So you want to make sure that you're satisfied with your colors. Hey Louise, how are you? Thanks for joining me. Let me go back into this a little bit. Get some orange going for these jacks. Who's ready for Halloween? I need a costume. Usually I have my costume picked out way in advance, and this year I don't. Last year my daughter and I were Morticia and Wednesday Adams, and honestly guys, this was like a dream come true because I had always wanted to have a daughter that would do that with me. So we watched some Adams Family episodes together and she totally loved it, and she was the perfect Wednesday, and I think that I was a pretty good Morticia. And she had mentioned that she wanted to do that again this year, but I didn't want to make her do that. I didn't want her to think that she had to do that. Um, so I waited. She decided that she's going to be a unicorn instead, which is fine. And now I don't know what I'm going to do. This is a fun technique. This is just its one of those fun, semi-messy things that you can do that uh, look amazing when it's done. Okay, so now we've got a bit of a hot mess, but that's how it's supposed to look. You've been dressing up as a deer. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> I need to see pictures of that. That's so appropriate. I was actually thinking of being a deer. I have some cool antlers, but I don't know if I have time to kind of make a full costume for that. My son is going to be some very obscure character from a video game. I honestly don't even remember the name of the game because I've never played it before. My sister got him into that and uh, so he's going to do that. But he is typically obscure when it comes to his costumes. He was a black arrow once, literally like he wore all black and I had to get like the stiff felt and I cut out arrows and he wore them on his head and on his arms. And that was his costume, and he just pointed at things. <laughs> he was hilarious. So, okay. I think we're good. So now I'm going to close these up because, you know, I don't really want to make a mess and have these spill everywhere. And we're going to be using the heat tool, so I don't want to blow powder everywhere. Okay. All right. So now... One thing that you can do is kind of tap this a little bit to get the powders to move around. You know, you've got some some big clumps in this area here, and you can just kind of get it to move around a little bit like that. Okay, so now we're going to take our heat tool. I've got my Wagner heat tool. The good thing about this one is that it's not super duper loud like my old one is. 
or was. <clears throat> I'm just gonna let it heat up for a minute. And then, flip this around. Now we're gonna just start heating it. And hopefully you'll get to see what happens as it dries. See what's happening there? It's starting to bubble. It's drying the paste and it's making it bubble. There are some nice ones. Can you guys see what's happening? You see all the bubbles? I love that. That's just the air coming out, the, the water that's kind of evaporating. Okay, I think that that looks pretty good. Can you guys see that? Now I like to test it a little, make sure it's dry. Yep, that's pretty dry. And now I can take like a nice big fluffy brush and just kind of get rid of the excess powder you can use an eraser too if you find that the brush isn't really working. And then you have a molten metal look to your jack-o'-lanterns. Isn't that cool? Super fast, it's super easy. And now I can make a fun holiday card, or Halloween card, I should say. This I often do on black um, cardstock, this technique. Um, it looks really good, but I figured for the point of the video, you guys wouldn't really be able to see if I was doing it on black, so um, I used the white. Thank you, Fawn. Isn't that fun? And when you do different types of stencils, um, like if you did snowflakes with silvers and blues, thanks, Greta. I appreciate it. Um, the look is totally different, you know? Um, I've done this with unicorns, and I did one once with a jellyfish. I don't know if I can find it right now. I don't know if I see it. Hold on, talk amongst yourselves for a second. I might have it available. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Here we go, I found it. See that? I'm more organized than I think I am sometimes. So this is done with white, no, I'm sorry, pearlescent. Hi Denise, that's okay, you can watch the replay. Thanks Christine. So this is done with the pearlescent white. Let me see if I can find it. Here we go. That's this one, pearlescent, and done exactly the same using the metallic effects powders. You can use the perfect pearls too, obviously, and just tapped on and then heat set. Isn't that fabulous? So two totally different looks depending on what kind of stencil you're using and then what color your base paste is. So this is done with the pearlescent. You can use glossy white too. And then this is done with the glossy black. Thanks, Denise. Um, so it's a lot of fun. And I hope you guys learned a little something today. And coming up, probably towards the end of the month, I'll have this on a finished card on my blog. Unless I get super excited and post it sooner than that. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Does anybody have any questions for me? I'll hang out for a second and then see if you do. Um, again, you don't want to use a matte paste for this. It doesn't give you the same effect. It's got to be shiny when it dries. Um, I know that Imagine Craft has paste as well, and honestly, I haven't tried this technique with their pastes, but I'm going to do that at some point to see how it works because they have some really beautiful colors like iridescent green and iridescent purple. This is a jelly... No, this isn't um, a stamp. It's a stencil. This was done with a stencil, which I can't show you right now because it's soaking in water. Um, it's a stencil like this, just a metal stencil. How cool would this look if you use this molten metal technique? Wouldn't that be great? That would be beautiful. So I hope that you experiment with your stencils if you have them. If, if you don't, let me know. I'll give you some recommendations as to some really good stencils that are useful that you'll use time and again. Um, and yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you're inspired. Have a great day, guys. Bye.